I think that the reason why people believe in the existence of the ISS is because it makes them feel better. It's some kind of reassurance of their belief system and their psychological state of mind. It's comforting, I guess, to know that there is in fact some ISS flying somewhere in the sky 400 kilometers above the spinning Earth with people on board. It's really mind-blowing and simply amazing achievement of the entire mankind. International Space Station. Bullshit! International fake station! There is a saying, if I can see it, then I'll believe it. So people can see it, on the pictures, on the internet and everywhere else. And it's just impossible for them to realize and comprehend that whatever they see on those pictures is not real. It's not the ISS they think it is. Anyway, Paul Clark made an entire film about this, so let's hear what he has to say. One rather laughable claim I hear is that the International Space Station can't be a hoax because I can see it from my house. Well, can you see people inside it from your house? No, there is clearly something up there orbiting. It just happens to be empty and has never been manned. It's just an orbiting tin can. Another aspect of the illusion of space travel is space walks. These are faked inside a swimming pool. It's a custom-built swimming pool, and that's a great way to fake zero gravity. They now wear snorkels to make sure that they don't drown in space. How can this be happening? A snorkel in space? There really is no sane explanation for why a gallon of water would leak into someone's spacesuit unless you realise the whole thing is faked inside a swimming pool. In this scene, you can see the Chinese spacewalk and you can see a bubble coming up from the guy's suit. How do you have a bubble in space? Space is supposed to be a vacuum, not a swimming pool. But it's obviously just a swimming pool filled with water. Obviously, there would be some equipment that they could only fix from the outside. But a lot of these spacewalks, it seems like equipment they easily could have configured to be accessible from the inside of the International Space Station it seems more like an excuse to get out and show their other space trick, which is the faking of spacewalks in a swimming pool. In this vid, you catch a glimpse of someone wearing a scuba tank. Scuba tanks in space? Snorkels and scuba tanks in space? They act like a spacewalk is just a walk in the park, like there's very little danger involved at all. They're looking through the spacesuits. Oh, <laughs> here's a spacesuit. We're going to go for a spacewalk. As if there's no danger at all. Like they don't care. They don't care. They, they don't act like they're in a life-threatening situation. Like they could die at any second, even though they can. So you would think to preserve their life, they would want to minimize the amount of spacewalking that they did. But there seems to be an abundance of equipment on the outside of the International Space Station that constantly requires repairing, which makes for a good TV spectacle and is inspired by movies like Sandra Bullock's Gravity. And after Gravity came out, they of course had to do another spacewalk to fix some emergency 
some piece of equipment that their lives depend on that, amazingly, they can fix every time. But you know what? Thanks to the genius of the engineers at NASA, they employ snorkels in space now, so that should stop them from drowning. It seems mandatory to smile if you're on the International Space Station. I guess when you're doing a hoax, you have to have a big smile plastered on your face because that's what distracts people. They supposedly urinate into these funnels. How do they keep it clean? How do they stop it from being encrusted with dried urine? You can't use water to clean it. You could, but you'd be wasting a precious resource and then there'd be dirty urine-filled water floating around the cabin instead of ordinary water. So to summarise, they're living with their own excrement, their faeces and their urine. They build the International Space Station out of long, thin segments. There's all kinds of motions being translated to the International Space Station through these blue handles everywhere. They could spring a leak between segments easily. There's no airlock between segments. They don't do laundry or have showers and they're incredibly uncomfortable the whole time. They don't have access to proper medical treatment or facilities. They have to routinely go outside to fix equipment because they like to put stuff on the outside of the International Space Station that can only be fixed from the outside. So in short, this International Space Station is a suicidal hellhole. It's an awful place to visit. Every second their life is in danger and they could easily die, yet nothing ever goes wrong that they can't easily cope with and fix given the incredibly limited set of tools they must have up there. And they act like they don't care. The International Space Station is the worst place in the world to be, and yet they act like it's the best place you could be. When they're supposedly in the International Space Station, I suspect they're actually in the astronaut facility Star City Moscow. There's a specially built training facility there have been very few civilians in space. One of them is a South African millionaire. He had to do several months of training in Star City, Moscow. And what you do is you learn the zero gravity tricks. That's what the training is for. They will tell you, oh, it's training to handle contingencies on the International Space Station. And if someone gets sick, you know, you have to get in the Soyuz and quickly hurry back to Earth. Or if you have to do a spacewalk. <laughs> they have to hide in Star City, Moscow, because if they're photographed anywhere, it would ruin the whole hoax. They have to stay very hidden. In fact, they basically have to live in Star City, Moscow, as they would do on the International Space Primer key means you can use any background that you like. This is what the background looks like. Uh, this is the true background that we filmed this on. With primer key it means you can have any background that you like, like this, or maybe this, or maybe this.
just just with just what well, I'm going to show you a couple of reasons why this is CGI and can't be a time lapse. Okay. Okay. So I don't I don't know if you're recording full screen. So I'm just gonna now look look at the lights. Okay. This is okay. First of all, the the space station takes about I think 90 minutes to circle the whole planet. Right. Apparently. So. I'm guessing this time lapse was done in a matter of let's just say 50 minutes, yeah, from start to finish. Let's look at the lights. You don't see a single light flicker. Now I know that these are not single lights, they're a bunch of lights and we're seeing that's why it's so bright, but I'm going to show you something here. This this is a, supposed to be a time lapse. A time lapse is when you set the camera to take images at set intervals. So if this took them 50 minutes, um, we're seeing only two minutes, right? Because you take pictures at every, say, three seconds, every one minute, whatever. Um, and then you put them together and you get a short clip. So if this was a time lapse, you would see certain areas where the lights would go off or they would change slightly. I mean, you're telling me in this 50 minutes across the whole planet, no, no one switched off their lights. Look, look at this. Um, just look, I'm going to show you also the fact that the clouds are not moving. These lightnings are also a giveaway. Um, this is showing you the lightning from start to finish. So you see the lightning start and go to you see. This is not a time lapse. A time lapse would not show you these lightnings from start to finish. It would show you just an instant, just the instant it, the shutter opens. Now, again, if the space station's moving, you're not going to be able to get these clear shots if you um, keeping the shutter open for long periods, right? Now, look at. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, this is a time lapse of. Seoul. This is in South Korea. I know this. This is on a smaller scale, but you get the picture. You get what I'm saying. Look how much change in light happens in just a matter of minutes in just one city. So when zooming up, look at this. You see that? You expect to see that is happening here, but it doesn't happen anywhere at all. This is complete complete rubbish this is cgi it's fake and it's not a very good fake either look at the let's see here look at the sun do you see the sun being that small when it's up above you no and if it's 93 3000 miles away the shape of the the size of the sun shouldn't change depending on your location wherever you are you should still be the same size and if it's this far from up there then how do we how can we see it so close when we're down it, this is complete rubbish the background you can tell it's just a background that's been placed there i don't know what this is meant to be is this the van allen belt well, what is that is that meant to be where the atmosphere ends hmm why are these clouds not moving why is no none of the lights flickering what is up with these thunders what does thunder strike the same place multiple times like this you see it there was one bit where you see two hitting the exact same same place
ne diyorsam Ne duyduysam yalan Yalan Kim ne dediyse Ne duyduysan yalan